Hi, this is Sarah Stricker at the Guelph Turfgrass Institute, and let's talk turf. Today I'm going to read an abstract from research that was conducted by James William Roy in 1998. The title of the research is Infiltration, Nitrate, and Chloride Leaching and Dicamba Fate in Unsaturated Soil Below Turfgrass. Let's break that down. Infiltration means how water percolates into the the soil. And then we're looking at nitrate and chloride leaching. So nitrate, that is a, a nitrogen form of commonly found in fertilizers. And chloride in turf grass, another essential nutrient is potassium. And it's often supplied in fertilizers as potassium chloride. And so that's why we're looking at chloride leaching in this product. If you have too much chloride, you can end up burning the turf. So it is important to see what the fate, what happens to the chloride after it's been broken off from the potassium. And then we're looking at a specific pesticide called dicamba and, and looking at the fate of it. So they want to know what happens to this product after it's been applied and it has infiltrated into the soil and we're specifically looking at unsaturated soil. So that means that it is not fully filled with water. Soils have pores, so it's air holes between all the particles. And when all of those air holes are filled with water, we call that a saturated soil. So we're looking at specifically unsaturated soil below turf grass. So let's read the abstract and then we'll break it down. The leaching of pesticides and fertilizers applied to turf grass will be affected by microbial and plant activity unique to this system. The objectives of this research were to measure the degradation of dicamba in thatch and soil using a small scale laboratory batch experiment, to investigate the effects of turf grass on water flow and the leaching of nitrate, chloride, and dicamba applied to field lysimeters packed with sandy loam soil profile and topped with turf grass and to test the ability of the model leachum within Express to simulate these processes. Degradation of dicamba was 5.9 to 8.4 times faster in thatch than in soil, with a half-life as low as 5.5 days. Drainage and leaching occurred primarily in autumn, being strongly controlled by evapotranspiration. Leachum predictions mirrored the fluctuation in water contents, solute concentrations, and drainage well, though the predicted values often differed from field measurements. Okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> We're looking at leaching, and so leaching is the process of pesticides and other products moving through the soil in water. And they're saying that this is going to be affected by microbial, so that's fungi and bacteria living in the soil. They can break down any kind of compound. and it's gonna be unique to the plants that are in the system as well. The objectives were to measure how much dicamba, the pesticide, breaks down in the thatch, and the thatch is that layer of plant material sort of between where the grassy layer and the roots are. It's made up of all of the previous year's dead leaves from the grass plants, and as the the grasses grow, it, it just naturally builds up. And then they also investigated how turf grass affected water flow and the movement of nitrate, chloride, and dicamba. So they used lysimeters, which is a device that can be used to measure evapotranspiration. And evapotranspiration is the sum of transpiration and evaporation. Evapotranspiration. Evaporation is how water gets drawn up and out of soil by the heat of the sun. And transpiration is similar, but in plants. The process of water being pulled through the plant by evaporation on the, on the leaf of the plant. The way that water moves up from the ground through the plant is through transpiration. It's sort of like how you drink pop through a straw you put the straw in your mouth and, and you suck and the, the pop will go from the bottom of the cup upwards. It's the same way. Instead of 
you sucking at the top of the straw, it's the sun evaporating the water at the very edge of the leaves that pulls water up and out. It gets evaporated at the tops of the leaves, then the water moves all the way through the plant, up from the roots, up from the soil. So that is transpiration. So transpiration plus evaporation is evapotranspiration. They had these lysimeters that were filled with sandy loam soil and turf grass on top. And they also tested this mathematical model called Leachim, which is in a program, a computer program called Express, to simulate the process. Um, what they found was that dicamba degraded faster in the thatch than in soil, which actually makes a lot of sense. Um, there's a lot of microbe activity within the thatch. That's a really good place for microbes to live. So they're going to be present and they'll be able to break down that pesticide. Um, and so when they say a half-life, the half-life is how much time did it take for the product to be decreased by half. So if I put 10 milliliters out, how long does it take from that 10 milliliters to turn into five milliliters by degradation? And they said that that was 5.5 days. There's a smudge there, so I, I think it's 5.5 days. They said there's a, there was more drainage and leaching happening in autumn being strongly controlled by evapotranspiration. So I think what they're saying there is that the summer, which is hotter, has more evapotranspiration happening when that, so that means more water moving up and out of the system. So more drainage and moving in the soil, uh, leaching, happens in autumn when there's less heat driving transpiration and evaporation. The program Leachem was able to mimic the fluctuations in water content, so the amount that it changed was estimated by the program, but the actual value was a little bit different than the field measurement. It doesn't say if it was higher or lower, just that it was able to mimic the same pattern, but the value itself was, was different. Well, there you have it. That's the end of the thesis abstract. Stay tuned, stay turfy, and have a great day.